So let's talk about some simple facts about probability. When you're trading, the only thing you can control is your risk. If you were winning 50% of the time and losing 50% of the time, in 10 trades, you will lose 3.3 times in a row. That's this number here. Daily, that means three times or four times in a row. And if you're trading 100 trades with a 50% win ratio, you will lose 6.6 .6 times in a row. Now obviously, you can't be 6.6 .6 again, so that's six or seven times in a row. This calculates how much you require as a profit to recover from the losses if you have that. And that is a fact. You will get that if you are having a 50% win ratio. Therefore, let's just have a look. Suppose you are risking 5% on any given trade. So you've got a $10,000 pot and you've got a 5% risk. So you're risking $500 on any given trade. If you did that, then you will, at some point within 10 trades, need to get 22% back to get back to break even. And in 100 trades, you'll need 43% to get back to break even. That's clearly not acceptable. So you have to reduce your risk amount down. Now, you will find that a lot of people suggest that you risk 3%. And you'll see here that you still need 12.96% after 10 trades to get back to break even and 23% to get back to break even after 100 trades. So that is just the maths of, of the situation. That's the rules of the game. So how long are you going to be able to take that pain of being down that far? So the next question is, well, what is a better risk? And if you put in 1% in there, you will see after 10 trades and you manage your risk correctly, you can never be down more than 4%. And if you take it on 100 trades, it's 7.29%. And 1,000 trades, it's 10%. Now, you might say that's not very adventurous. And I agree, it's not. Um, but the name of the game is not being adventurous. The name of the game is making money. If you trade in this way with risking only 1%, you will always be in control of your money. And your target, of course, is to win more than 50% of the time. That's where you have to get the edge. And I will talk to you about the edge right now. The first part of having the edge is to make sure you trade the right asset. Now, you can see here, this is a spreadsheet. This is, it's taken quite a long time to develop. And essentially, it gives you an overview of all of the major assets and allows you to put in your own personal other assets as well. Now, let's just take a few examples, okay? Here we have, for example, at this particular point in time, which is a little while ago, gold um, was trading at one, two, three, four, as it happens. And um, it has a weekly rating in terms of bull bearishness of minus 13. Daily minus 14.75, 4 hour minus 14, hour 8.5, 30 minute 9.75. And it has uh, an inherent risk reward ratio, 61, 21, and so on. So that would be a good asset to trade from the point of view of its inherent risk reward ratio though as you can see down here there's one with much better inherent risk reward ratio which is the dax um, but it would have been a bad one to trade because it is red 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 green green so we have conflict across these different times so what we're looking for is something without conflict and here we can see um, some things here which are without conflict. For example, the S&P 500, and that's without conflict, but its inherent risk reward ratio isn't so strong. So what you're looking to do is to find assets 
there are strong, that's to say green here, and green here. But most importantly, they must be in the lower time scales because they lead. So everything all the way down through here must all be consistent. So here, for example, Euro stocks at this particular point in time was all consistent. But it wasn't so good from a risk reward ratio, from an inherent risk reward ratio. So those are all decisions you have to make when choosing to trade a particular asset. And you can see that there are various various assets through here. For example, at this particular point in time, the dollar yen, the US dollar JPY, the dollar yen, was green, 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 and then neutral on the four hour and neutral on the 30 minute. But both of those are uh, positive neutrals and the risk reward ratio is very strong. So actually on this particular day, the dollar yen was probably the right asset to be looking to trade. And since you're posting your attention on something which has got inherent good strong risk reward ratios and is consistent in terms of its direction and trend, you have a potential positive outcome. And that's what it's all about. It's all about probability and putting everything in your favor. So what's the next part of uh, managing risk? I'll show you. As you'll have noticed from the last page that we were on the market overview page, we're looking to trade the dollar yen long. And so we have our $10,000 in the account. We've got our risk of 1%. We're going to trade the dollar yen. We're looking at its spread, which happens to be 1.5. This is going to be our target entry price. This is going to be our technical stop. This is going to be our first target and our second target. Um, this is how much margin actually this particular account requires. And this calculator tells you that your maximum risk per pip will be seven units, seven dollars per pip of movement. If you trade like that, then you will be within your risk constraints and you'll be trading much more safely. And uh, if you want to be even more prudent, of course, you can decide to trade with a smaller risk per pip. And this puts in the details of what you're actually deciding to do. It also tells you a, a whole load of other information, which I'll explain on some other video sometime for you. Um, but for example, here it tells you that if you did that, you'd be controlling $62,000 worth of asset. Uh, if you traded with three units per pip, you'd be controlling $25,000 worth of asset. And it gives you an idea about exactly how many risk pips and target pips you're going to have. So your risk pips are those. These are your target pips. And it tells you also how much you're likely to make. So if we come down through here, we can see the other details. Um, in this section here, we can say the reward value would be $50 for that. Reward value 2 would be $222. Or if we traded with the original uh, objective setting of 7, our first reward value would be $122, and our second reward value would be $540. And in terms of the account value, because we've got $10,000, dollars in the account that would give a return of 5.4 percent off that one trade so and if we just hit the first target it would give a return of 1.23 percent off of just that one trade so that would be a, a good trade to make and is good risk reward ratios and you could increase your account balance by 5.4 percent out of one trade which if you did just one trade in a week that would be a very good return on your capital so that's the basics of risk management and let's move on to the next bit about putting everything in your favor.